Hello YouTube, Jay here and welcome back to the Glove Room. Uh, today was going to be a really special day today. Uh, it was going to be game three of our Woodbat League semifinals, but unfortunately we lost yesterday. So my offseason begins. I know that there's that age old metaphor in baseball that there is no offseason, but if that were true, I would be playing tonight. So instead, uh, I'm doing a video about the beginning of the offseason. Uh, I will settle for the fact that today is October 26th and that means it's my 33rd birthday. So an enormous happy birthday to my twin brother, Tommy. I love you very much. Thank you for sticking with me for all these years, like you had a choice. And uh, additionally, I'd like to say happy 37th wedding anniversary to my parents, Betty and Vince. Tomorrow, October 27th, again, is their 37th wedding anniversary. You know, Tommy and I grew up, uh, we didn't have a lot of money, but you know what we did have? We had the most loving and supportive parents that two adopted twins from Korea could ever ask for. So thank you so much, mom and dad. I love you guys oh so very much. Um, so Tommy had the idea, uh, now that my season's begun, thank you very much for rubbing that in. I'd also like to say I'm 33, so I'm not an old man, right? I know that I'm older than some of you guys on Instagram, but, uh, you know, I'm not like, you know, an, an old guy or anything. I will say I have no idea what on fleek means, and I have no real reason to use the term bay in context. So I know a lot of you kids today use words like that, but I don't know what any of them mean. So... Uh, guys like Glove Cowboy and Yellow Sub 73, you know, and Hook'em Fox were just cut from a different cloth that was made in the, in the early 90s. So anyway, those are our formative years. So uh, I love you guys and I love all my followers and all my subscribers on Instagram and YouTube. But uh, some of you guys I'm just never going to understand. But one thing we have in common is the love of this game. It's a beautiful game of baseball. So Tommy suggested that I talk to you guys about some simple tips uh, that I would use as soon as my season's over and some of the stuff that I would do in season. So going to try not to take up too much of your time and uh, you guys can go back to your day. Uh, so I brought my bag inside from my, my car and the first thing that I'll say is bring your stuff inside. I cannot stress that enough. Even if you leave it in your bag, you're doing yourself a service, but we're going to talk about the next step. Get it out of your bag. So here's my bag inside. First thing I'm going to do is I'll take my cleats out. Uh, you see that some of them can, your cleats can be smashed and a lot of them are plastic and leather these days. Uh, so they can get kind of smashed. If you have anything that you can put inside of the, uh, in the bottoms of these things, uh, it's to reshape them or reform them a little bit. Uh, that'll be helpful. Always check out your laces to make sure that there's no rips or uh, nicks. Uh, those can get real bad over time, and then you'll lose a lace, and then you know if you don't have another one, you're kind of in trouble. Um, check the bottoms of your cleats. Do you have enough length in your uh, in your metal, or even in your plastic tips if that's what you're using? Uh, I recommend taking a nail to get some of this dirt out right here. Um, you, know, you don't want that stuff to get too stuck. Uh, you want uh, you want to take care of that as soon as possible. Uh, since it's the fall, now is a great time, or the beginning of the winter, now is a great time to take advantage of deals from uh, retailers like Dick's Sporting Goods. And there's plenty of places online uh, where you can get baseball equipment for pretty cheap. Um, so if you want to get some new stuff, you know, just let me know what you're looking for. I can take a look for you. Um, if not, hey, no problem. Asked anyway. Okay, so let's get to the meat of this thing. Uh, two gloves in here. There was I was playing center field, so there was no real reason to uh, bring an infielder's glove, but I do anyway for emergencies. Uh, we have a great um, set of middle infielders, but uh, just in case, I brought this uh, MZP62. Um, and it's sitting a little pink fat ball. Let's just talk about gloves for a second. Uh, great to get these things out of here, but uh, the one thing that I will say is it's best to, one, have a softball in it if you're going to store it, and two, store it in a, uh, at least a cool, dry place or a room temperature location. Um, like I'll mention, uh, gloves and bats are just like people. We don't want to be too hot. We don't want to be too cold. So uh, if you're going to put this on a shelf somewhere, put it in a place where you wouldn't mind it sitting for a couple of days, weeks, or months. Uh, before you do that, though, you should probably give it a good once over. Uh, if there's a lot of excessive dirt on there, then you want to take a brush to it and uh, get that leather off, let that dirt off there. Uh, the next thing you should do is take a Lexol leather cleaner or any leather cleaner and just give it a very light, uh, light once over. Uh, once we do that and we wipe off the excess, then we want to add a, uh, I use a baseball glove specific leather conditioner. I use Pelican Glove Rub. I love every product that they've come out with. And um, the reason why I like it best is because it's made for baseball gloves. Uh, there's Rawlings Glove Oleum, Wilson A2000 Pro Stock Conditioner, um, Mizuno has Strong Oil. There's a lot of great variations out there. There's no reason to use stuff like Kiwi Saddle Soap or Neat's Foot Oil. Um, that stuff can actually clog the pores of a leather baseball glove. Um, let's remember that leather itself 
is an organic material and it's vulnerable to deterioration. So the last thing you want to do, stop up the pores and do anything to potentially damage it. So uh, let's stick with those products. Those guys know what they're doing and they're pros. So, you know, I trust them implicitly uh, for all my, my glove care needs. Uh, after we've done that, uh, let's put a ball back in the pocket and then uh, make sure that it just sits up. So you're going to let it sit up. Let it sit up just like this. You can see all the other gloves that I've got. I don't know if you actually can. Uh, they're sitting up in a similar manner. Uh, today's a lot of fun. Uh, every day up until the spring is a lot of fun because I get to relace these. I get to, uh, you know, break some of these gloves in. So uh, it's not going to be too boring in the glove room. I'll make sure I'll have plenty of content to bring you. Uh, so those are, those are gloves. Uh, Evo Shield, just got to dust these off. These things can take a beating. Um, helmet, check for cracks. Scuffs aren't a problem. Make sure that your padding is good. Um, never a bad time to get a new helmet, especially if there's any sort of crack in it. Uh, if there's any cracks in your helmet, it's not safe anymore. I don't care what you say. So please, please, please uh, buy a new helmet if you see any cracks in the shell. Um, the reason why I'm saying to get all this stuff out of the bag is not just for the form of your glove or for, you know, the, the smell of it, right? So your cleats don't stink up your bag or your car. But um, there's a lot of dirt in here. There's a lot of debris in here. And for some reason... There's a pair of socks in here and a pouch of big league chew. And there's all kinds of garbage in here and sunflower seeds and things you can get, get uh, on your, your glove and into your batting gloves. And uh, you don't want that stuff on there. So just get it out. Now's a good opportunity to take a vacuum cleaner or at least turn it over. So this is a baseball bat pack. So I've got a top pocket where I keep my batting gloves. And this is the state that my batting gloves are in just from yesterday. So I've got a pair of Rollins Workhorse that are pretty flat. So that's all right. But this is my, these are my Nikes, and these things are, they don't look like they're in good shape. They are, but, you know, there's a lot of pine tar on these. And what can happen if you leave those, even for a couple of days, in the, if you leave them outside, or even if you leave them in your bag, it's going to form that shell of pine tar, and you're going to put them on the next time. You're going to put your hand right through it. A lot of palm rips, a lot of finger rips. So, you know, take the time now to put these uh, in the washer. Uh, don't put them in the dryer. Just let them air dry. But put them in the washer. A lot of the, these are um, washer safe. So, you know, get that pine tar off there and uh, always take a look and uh, see if you need a new pair. Um, check the wrist for any rips and uh, make sure that your palm is, uh, you know, <laughs> still in one piece. Well, lastly, your bats. Um, this is what I carry my bats uh, to the games with. I brought another, with, with, another one with me, uh, but my Maple Lace Velo, the one that I was talking about in a previous video that was with me for over a season and a half, broke. Uh, died a hero, but I'm not too happy about it. So uh, I do have another one here. Actually, I have two here, but uh, man, that one lasted such a long time. So uh, I carry a bat sleeve, um, and this is what's in it. This is my Warstick 271. Um, if you guys have lizard skins or if you guys have bat tape, take a look at it. Make sure that there's not too much pine tar on there um, because what's going to happen there is that'll turn into a film as well and actually make your bat tape smooth as opposed to sticky. So um, always check your... your um, Lizard skin as well, um, batting gloves with pine tar on them can take um, the rubber off the top of a lizard skin. So this one actually might need to be uh, re-gripped in the near future. Uh, if there is a lot of dirt or excessive pine tar on the handle of your bat, a little bit of rubbing alcohol just come run rubbed over the top like this will be able to get that off. Um, if you need your, your bat smoothed out, taking a bone or a bottle or another bat and then rubbing it on top um, for a good while will actually smooth out. So there are no misshapen sides. So, um, yeah, let's make sure that we keep our bats uh, stored, handle up in a cool, dry place. Again, every baseball bat made of wood has a moisture content. And if you leave that in your car, it doesn't matter if it's hot or cold. Well, if it's hot, you can bake the moisture out of it. and It'll make your bat super brittle. So you don't want to do anything to really ruin the structural integrity of that bat. Um, for all you uh, composite bat hitters out there, uh, cold weather can make that composite bat crack easier. So just be really careful if you think, oh, well, you know, it'll hurt my, hurt my hands less. It actually is, uh, it might make the bat weaker. So and I don't think any of you guys are playing like 25 degrees or anything. But uh, if you do, you know, it might be best to stay, stay away from that composite if you're uh, in a wood bat league. So, uh, yeah. So if you guys have any questions, I know that was quick. Uh, but it don't, like I said, I don't want to take up uh, any of you guys' time. You guys have lives, right? So um, if you guys have any questions, hit me up on Instagram at PickleTheBeast417 or email me at thejetstolehome at gmail.com. Hope you guys have a great day. And uh, if you run into at Tommy underscore Mac 1026, wish him a happy birthday. All right, see you guys later. Stay grassy.